was you. You watching right now, he made you, right? <clears throat> Jess. Welcome back, my beautiful queens. Today's video is how to get over a breakup. I literally woke up this morning and for some reason, that's all I could think about was making a video about that. And the funny thing is I wanted to make a video about this a little while ago, but I was like, oh, who's gonna wanna watch this? But you know what? I don't care. I wanna make it because I really think that in this video, I can share some of my best ways to actually get through and get over a breakup and genuinely come out of it so much stronger. So let's get to it. And yeah, I feel really weird, but let's just do it. So I've only had two relationships and I'm not gonna really talk about my personal experience because it's something that I haven't spoken about to anyone except my family. Uh, so I want to kind of keep it that way because I truly believe that God sees and knows everything and he's the only spirit. Like God is the only one that I actually care about knows the truth because at the end of the day, in my, my belief is when we pass away, like we're going to go to him hopefully. And to try to do everything by to, to try to do everything in the grace of God, even when you're going through such a traumatic time or when you're really angry or whatever, I always try to think about, okay, if I like, you know, how would God want me to handle this? And sometimes, you know, you do say some things and you do react because you feel like you're going crazy <laughs> and that's normal. But as long as you don't do anything spiteful or to genuinely hurt that person, then I truly think if you ask for forgiveness and your relationship with God, you you know, it is what it is. So that was just me rambling on. <laughs> I think the first thing is to genuinely understand that and come to terms with that, the, that you are over. I feel like when people go through breakups, you kind of have this weird feeling like that they're still going to be there. And the, the in my opinion, I feel like when you break up with someone or when you know you're no longer with someone or whatever you're you're genuinely mourning the loss of someone even though they're not dead but they're dead to you if that makes sense so when someone passes away you mourn that you're never going to see them again you're never going to speak to them whatever the same thing happens with a relationship especially when you know say for example you live with the person and even if you don't live with the person you're speaking to them every single day you see them the most out of everyone they know the most about you etc etc so and you don't know the most about them so it's very tricky right but in the sense this is what i think really helped me get through my second breakup my first one funny enough i really did not even care like at all <laughs> when i think about it <clears throat> i was kind of like right, i'm over it but the we broke up twice and the first time it was very bad and I was very young so maybe that's why but anyways I truly turn to God and that is something that I really feel like has got me through everything like I obviously we've all been through a lot of things and without God I really don't think I would be here I, I did lose lose my father as well about three years ago and I don't want to talk too much about it because I know I'll start crying but that was the hardest thing that I've ever gone through in my whole life and I'm still going through it. You never really don't, you, you never really kind of get over that. You know, it's always going to be with you and some days are not so great, some days, whatever. Ah, oh, I can feel it coming. Okay. Um, so when I think about that, I think, okay, if I could get through that and other traumatic things in my life, this really is nothing. And I started to think, okay, in five years time, Am I going to even be thinking about this? Hell no. So why am I thinking consistently about this? And I learned something that I really wanted to share. So when you do go through an emotional experience, it takes your brain and mind 60 seconds to process everything, right? After that 60 seconds, it's our choice to dwell on it. It's our choice to keep thinking about it. Oh my God. You know, when I heard that, I was like, oh my God. And pardon me. Joe Dispenza, if you have not watched any of his videos, I'm gonna link one down below. It's the best video. Oh my God, I love him so much. He talks about living in the past. And the more you live in the past, the more you are gonna attract the past. Now, I'm not saying, please don't get it wrong. I'm not saying, you know, not to cry and not to be upset and think of whatever. But the more you do that, the more you're gonna start living there. What helped me, and I hope this will help you, is write a list. <laughs> 
I did this before, like during, but when you're not with someone, write a list of the reasons why you're not with that person. If you broke up with them, you write the reasons why you broke up with them. If you didn't break up with them, but you still, like your heart knows that if someone's for you, they will be for you no matter what, and it will be easy. I don't care what anyone says, oh, it's meant to be hard. No, it is not. It is not meant to be hard. It is genuinely meant to be easy. Uh, analogy I heard that I was like, oh, one person trying to lift a couch, that's hard. Two people trying to lift a heavy couch, that's easy, right? So if you're the only person trying to lift the couch, of course it's going to be hard. So write a list, write a list of everything like to the T that you don't like about, that you don't, you said you liked about the person, but you really didn't. And that can be, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, their personality, everything, 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 right? Write a list and then go through the list. You're going to start laughing because I'm sure there's a lot of things that you're like, oh, you know, you put past or whatever, but then you're writing it because they're not going to see it. So the only person that's going to see it is you. So write your list, write your list. And after you write your list, whenever you feel the urge to, oh, whenever you feel the urge to message them or call them, whatever, go back to that. Whenever you start thinking of the little good things that they did, the, the, the bare minimum, shall I say. There's minimum and then there's bare and then there's that, right? Go back to that list because we try to think of little things that, you know, were so sweet, but it was so little that you're like, oh my gosh, but that was so sweet. But... The reason why you're thinking that is so sweet is because you don't do that for yourself, which leads me to my other point. The more you love yourself, the more you realize you don't tolerate. It's not that you won't, you don't tolerate that stuff. And that's something that I, I'm still going through, but wow, 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 wow. I have never in my whole life felt as happy as I am now. Like, and I'm not even just saying that for saying that, I genuinely mean it. Sometimes I get so excited. I want to cry because I'm like, I am so lucky. I'm so blessed. I feel like, oh, I hope you can feel my energy. I feel really, really good because I'm learning to actually get to know myself. So for example, this, I put this on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, you should just saying, <laughs> I put on my Instagram that I, I heard this thing and it said, how do you love yourself? Right? Everyone wants to know, how do I love myself? Well, the best way to love yourself is to get to know yourself. How do you get to know someone that you fall in love with? You get to know them, you take them on dates, you ask them questions, you get to know their personality, the good and the bad, you know, you spend quality time, keyword quality. Don't spend like five minutes when you have five minutes in between, you know, the dishes or your work or whatever. No, 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 I'm gonna spend an hour by myself and it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna literally just sit with myself, look at myself in the mirror, chat, have a fun time, read a book, Reading books, honestly, is so amazing. If you don't like to read, I really highly recommend listening to audiobooks or going on YouTube, my little secret, and just type in a book that you want to listen to and just listen to it. It's literally amazing. Write stuff down. Journal every morning and night. Write things that you genuinely love about yourself. It can be physical and then you start emotional. Just think of all the things that you want in another person and find them in yourself. Oh, oh, I'm telling you. I promise it will change your life. The more you learn to love yourself, the more your life will just, like everything will fall into your life. You won't even have to try to do anything. And the worst thing to do in a relationship or after a breakup is to try to force someone to stay. You can't force anything. And when you try to force something, it's gonna backfire. Think of it like this. Oh, think of it like this, an elastic band, right? You're forcing it to pull, but eventually it's gonna snap. And what happens, it ends up hurting you. So you should never allow anything to like control you in the sense where you feel like you need it because you don't need anything but you. And the greatest love that you should ever have is with yourself because this is what I think and I believe, I truly believe this. God, think, look at the world, right? God made these beautiful clouds, he made the sun, he made all this beautiful nature, he made these beautiful animals, right? But our, our, his greatest creation was humans, was us, was you, was you, you watching right now. He made you, right? And that in itself, like how could you even think of doubting yourself when God has created you? God created angels and then us, we're right below angels. Like that is, when I think about that, I'm like, how special are we? We are so special. You are so special. And please don't forget that. Like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't fathom it enough. It is so beautiful to think that the, the same God that made 
the beautiful you know nature and clouds and all that made us so whenever you start to doubt yourself just know that your father loves you and another little thing that helps me a lot is your dad right oh don't cry Jess. your dad wants the best for you and if you don't have a dad your mum or someone in your life wants the best for you right you do you honestly think that our father in heaven god you know i have two i have two fathers there wants you to be miserable wants you to cry wants you to be upset wants you to not be your true self wants you wants you to look in the mirror and be like who the hell am i no no we are on this earth for such a short amount of time and every day is genuinely a blessing it's a blessing it like i always say god wakes me up and i'm so grateful because he's my alarm do you know what i mean like there are people that fall asleep and they don't ever wake up it's, it's actually a thing the more you start focusing on how grateful you are to be alive and start to learn to love yourself and learn to you know accept your flaws and to work on yourself which is I'm gonna be honest it takes a lot of time and sometimes it's a bit annoying but to get to the other side you gotta go through that little rough patch you know you gotta go through that little little roughness to get to bliss and to get to genuine fulfillment and it is so amazing it is so amazing so my third point is <laughs> do things that you love now kind of relates to the second one but in reality you can't just go to work come home and do nothing no 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 okay do things you love go out with your friends if you don't have many friends go out by yourself and make friends talk to random people you never know who you're gonna meet trust me <laughs> do things you like you know start your health journey go to go to the gym if you want swim do something an activity that you genuinely love because life is truly worth living now there's this other analogy I want to come to. It's the 88 rule, right? So when think of yourself when you were eight years old. You didn't really have much of a care, right? Think of yourself when you're 80 years old. You don't want to look back at your life and be like, I was so fixated on something that I knew that wasn't for me, but because it wasn't there, and I thought I I thought this. Oh, I have something really good I need to say. I thought all this stuff. It didn't work out and now I'm really upset and I'm going to I'm going to stay upset for so long and I'm I'm going to keep thinking of the past so then your memory becomes a record of the past which means your day to day becomes a record of the past and you start living there. Trust me when I say everything in your life happens for you and happens to grow to either help you grow or to teach you a lesson. It's really funny because I truly believe that God puts you in situations to wake you up. And it might, you might be like, but why did it take like seven years? Why did it take three years? Why did it take two years? Whatever, right? Because you weren't getting the point. So he had to keep doing things to you for you to be like, oh my gosh. Okay, I get it now. I get it. I get it. You know? And some, some people learn quicker than others. Some people don't. Anyways. <laughs> but it is what it is. Now, something that I really thought of that I really need to share. What was it? It was actually a really good one. Oh, I found it in my little brain, my beautiful brain. Here's the thing, right? I heard something that was it's incredible. So I'm going to give you something real, raw, okay? You're going to have a little moment. When you picture that person that you're with, right? It could even be a friend, right? And you picture like who they were in the beginning of the relationship because usually that's the honeymoon phase, everyone calls it, right? They were amazing to you. They were everything you wanted, okay? But then obviously as the relationship like progressed, things started unfolding. You're like, what the hell is this? I did not sign up for this. Yada, 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 yada. Here's the thing. When you start picturing the person you're with, you're actually not even picturing them, right? You're picturing an imaginary person because you're picturing the person that you thought they were in the beginning of the relationship because realistically in the beginning of the relationship is when the person shows you their best self and that's what you fall for, right? And then you expect that that's how it's gonna be and then it doesn't end up being like that. So when you really think about it, the person you miss isn't even real. It's a per it's a, an imaginary person you have pictured in your head and that's what you're fixated on. You're not even fixated on reality. Now here's the thing. I am all for imagining and visualizing and everything, but why would you wanna visualize someone that you already have met that isn't that person that you're trying to remember as a person that you thought they were. I hope that all makes sense to you because honestly, when I heard that, I was like, 
wow. Because I don't know about you, but have you ever met someone that was so amazing and then throughout the course of knowing them more, you're like, wow, you are not the same person. Something is off. Something a little bit is off, right? That's the imaginary person that you picture in your head. So the way to overcome that is to realize that they are not your person. And I truly believe, and I believe from experience and from any, anyways, that whatever you want in a partner, when you start giving that to yourself, when you believe that you deserve it, I promise you they will come. Like, I promise you. Everyone used to say I live in La La Land and I live in romantic movies and whatever, and I do. And guess what? It's real. It is real. It is so real, okay? You can have a relationship where you are truly best friends, you are truly lovers, you have so much respect. Whatever you want, it's true. Write down the characteristics you want in your partner. Freaking don't worry too much about physically, can I can I just say? Can you worry about the mental? Physical will come, I promise. Like I'm not saying date someone that you don't find attractive at all, but you will find someone attractive that has all those characteristics when you start focusing on yourself. My last point is don't find a rebound. Don't this is just my opinion, you can do what you want. But for me, I feel like it's, there's no point in going to date someone or to meet someone just so you can get over someone. In saying that, I'm not saying don't talk to the opposite sex because sometimes you need to just to kind of feel like you're not doing something wrong and be like, okay, now I am single, I can talk to whoever I want. Go on dating apps if you want, but don't think anything too much of them, just talk, talk to people if you want. If you find, like I know people that have found their partners on dating apps, but each to their own, right? I just think to jump from a relationship to another one with the intention, with knowing that you still miss that person or knowing that you're, you're not fully healed from that person isn't going to lead to something great, in my opinion. I think it's done, right? And now you have time to focus on you. You have the rest of your life to be with that person, to, to be with your person, right? So be single now, enjoy it, write down everything, cry as much as you want, but don't live in that state. Don't live in that state. Do things that you love. Boss up. Boss up. Do the things that you really couldn't do when you were in a relationship. Be yourself and don't ever forget when you jump into your new relationship, don't change or stop what you're doing. You can compromise, yes, but don't completely stop something that you did that made you like have fun and enjoy your life for the person because you don't see eye to eye or because you want to spend all the time with them. You have to have your own life, but in saying that, priorities change. Anyways, <laughs> I hope this video has helped you because honestly, it really helped me. Obviously, in the start of the video, I talked about God, God, like talking to God, and even reading the Bible really, really helped me because there is no love greater than God, and God will never ever turn His back on you. So don't ever worry if a guy does, because realistically, wish him the best and be like, all right, cool, you do you now. I'm gonna do me and that's it don't wish anyone ill or like you know bad health or whatever like you know how we always say oh you'll never find someone like me that's the point they don't want to find someone like you maybe they do but they, they won't admit it but you don't want to find someone like them because then it's like back to the cycle again you want to level up and I believe that you're watching this video because you want to level up so let me know if this has helped you in any way Trust yourself, trust your intuition, and know that you deserve the best. I know this video is really long, but I really wanted to do it. I really wanted to do this, and yeah. I love you all so much, my beautiful queens. Don't forget to slay and subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Mwah! Bye!